Our last video lecture for chapter 3 deals with a famous phrase related to federalism, the laboratories of democracy. We've established throughout this chapter that federalism allows for states to have policies that are out of line with each other and sometimes, supremacy clause be darned, out of line with the national government. We viewed that with a few different lenses already. That's a way that we check tyranny. That's a way that we allow states to express their individual preferences. That's just a sign that we're a nutty, disorganized mess of a nation. Mess of a nation. We've viewed it with all these lenses already. In this video, we'll try on a different pair of lenses. Maybe this is just a way that we can experiment with something at a state level before trying it out at the national level. The phrase laboratories of democracy comes to us from a ruling from one of our more notable Supreme Court justices, Louis Brandeis. Brandeis was a controversial figure of his time as one of the most socially progressive members ever to serve on the Supreme Court, and notable for his defenses of nearly absolute free speech and an inherent right to privacy, even though one is not directly listed in the Bill of Rights or in the Constitution, as well as also being the first Jewish Supreme Court justice. Brandeis uses the phrase in his ruling in the New State Ice Company versus Liebman. Federalism allows that a single courageous state may, if its citizens choose, serve as a laboratory and try novel, and novel social and economic experiments without risk to the rest of the country. Coming out to us from Louis, Louis Brandeis and his ruling in New State Ice Company versus Liebman. That was a minority ruling. It was a uh, dissenting opinion that Brandeis is writing in there, so not binding law, but it is a phrase that we see that historians, political historians, and political theorists have come back to time and again. The idea that a state can be a laboratory of democracy. Now, this case itself is not one that we will commit to memory, but it is important for us to have a context here. The state of Oklahoma, in this case, had created a system in which required businesses to obtain a license in order to sell ice. Businesses that sold ice, including New State Ice Company, contested that this restriction was arbitrary and a violation of their due process. The court would ultimately hold that, yes, the specific restrictions that were being put forth by the state did violate due process rights and were therefore unconstitutional. Now, Obviously, the state can require licenses to sell certain goods, especially when it comes to foods, but this particular one was found to be tyrannical in some way, I guess, without getting into the fine notions of the case of New State Ice Company versus Liebman. What Brandeis actually wrote here is the dissenting opinion, saying that states should be able to create their own policies, arguing that this type of experimentation could serve as either an example for the rest of the country, or perhaps as another one of those Madisonian beacon lights, showing us a path which is to be shunned. And our, nation is, our nation's history is absolutely littered with policies that were experimented with at the state level before they became national policies. Take the woman's right to vote. Please. <laughs> oh, I crack me up. Uh, tip your weight staff, everyone. No, seriously. Take women's suffrage. Women's suffrage existed in several states prior to the 19th Amendment making it nat the national standard. Most notably, Wyoming becoming the first state to allow for women's suffrage. Granted, that was more so a move made to inflate their voting population to be large enough to be granted statehood, but it did serve as one of these democratic laboratories. When the sky didn't fall down with women voters in Wyoming, it gave ammunition to supporters of women's suffrage in other states. Look, it works in Wyoming, why not in New York, as the newspaper here reads. Although not every democratic experiment gains such traction, the careful observer will remember from your U.S. history classes that from 1797 through 1807, women were given partial suffrage in New Jersey, and that experiment seemed to stay pretty well confined to its lab. So it's not always that uh, an experiment in democracy takes off and becomes new national policy. Though one of the most often cited examples of a statewide experiment becoming brought, being brought to the national level in the modern era is that of the Massachusetts state health insurance system serving as the blueprint for the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. 
many of the provisions of Obamacare, especially the individual mandate requiring all citizens to have some form of public or private health insurance, were first seen in the so-called Romney Care policy in Massachusetts. Now, during the presidential election, Governor Romney tried his best to distance himself from those similarities and also to say that there was a fundamental difference between what worked for Massachusetts and what worked for the entirety of the United States, with those being two very different demographics. Massachusetts is not it is not a just miniaturized version of the United States. It is a different sample that you're dealing with. You aren't dealing with an accurate sample for the entire nation. But what is important to our study is the concept that sometimes state policies are applied on a national scale. The success or validity of the individual applications is extra topical as it's not so much whether or not they work, it is whether or not we see this, the idea of an experiment tried at the state level then later being applied to the national level as Brandeis suggested was possible. Sometimes states propose policies that are radically different from other states. Take the state of Iowa, please. <laughs> Wait a second, I already used that one, didn't I? Ah, shoot. Well, as we went over in class, Iowa is an example of a state that has a requirement that is way out of line with other states when it comes to when they issue learner's permits. Learner's permits can be issued at as young as 14 in Iowa. Now, we went over in class that there is a reason for this. It deals with their own state culture and their agrarian economy, but you can pretty quickly envision another state using the results of this policy as a justification for either lowering their driving age or not. If Iowa has some horrible increase in teenage deaths, other states are less likely to allow for young learner's permits. If the plan is successful without ill consequences, then you can just as easily see other agrarian states like Kansas and Nebrahoma adopting it. Similarly, a state senator in Missouri recently proposed a bill that would get rid of any sort of child labor laws. Children ages 14 through 16 are currently prohibited from working a full 50 plus hour work week. This bill would end up removing those restrictions. Now, this measure was met with great criticism and it didn't end up passing, but we can see how, if it did, it would serve as a small-scale experiment that would show whether or not such a system would work on a large scale or whether or not it would be doomed to catastrophic failure. Personally, I think that's despicable that some people think that teenagers should be required to, that they should be allowed to give teenagers 50 hours of required work a week. I mean, other than AP teachers. You hopefully get the point that Brandeis was making. Controversial or unconventional policies can be tested at the state level without the riskiness of a national experiment. If Missouri is brave enough to send its labor policies back to the 1840s, then they're at liberty to do it and serve as a test tube for the rest of the nation. Certainly there is one democratic experiment that the entire nation has its eyes on right now, and that is Washington and Colorado. Both states have allowed for the legalization of marijuana in violation of national policy. Regardless of one's take on legalized marijuana, these states are going to be invaluable to us as data points moving forward. Whatever happens in Washington and Colorado as a result of the legalization of marijuana, and there will be consequences, probably both good and bad, we will now have relevant American data to deal with to inform whether or not national policy or additional states' policies should change. Yet another experiment in the laboratory of democracy, man. And only time and politics will tell whether or not Washington and Colorado will be the next Wyoming's or the next Missouri's. That's all for chapter three, good people. I'll see you in class.